Hello and thank you for joining me today for today's drawing class. This class is part of It's Good To Give's Big Weekend In and if you don't know, It's Good To Give is a fabulous charity which supports young cancer patients and their families in their time of need. So if you can, I'd love it if you could make a donation. I'll pop all the details below. So if you haven't joined me for a class before, I'll let you know about my two important rules. So the first rule is to focus on the process of making the drawing and not to worry about how it's going to look at the end. So in today's drawing, I want you to really think about making interesting furry marks with your pencil, capturing a little bit of character and not worrying about having a perfect drawing at the end of it. My second rule is to draw along with me and not try to copy my drawing. So I'd love it if at the end we all had our own individual little characters. So what we're going to draw today is a little ferret character. So as it's good to give as a charity for young people, I thought I'd take inspiration from one of my young students and she has a real love and interest of ferrets. So I thought it'd be fun to have a go at drawing one. So all you're gonna to need to do for today's drawing is get some paper and then just a pencil. Any pencil will do, but if you happen to have drawing pencils, I'm gonna be using my HB, my 2B and my 4B pencil today. But as I say, if you've just got the one pencil, that will work just as well. So go and grab the materials that you want to use today and a beverage of choice and I'll see you in a moment. So we're going to keep this quite simple, looking at a sort of rounder shape for the face and then just looking at the nose and trying to get the eyes in the right spot but not worrying too much about being exactly the same as the photograph and just using that as our starting point. So very lightly, I'm sketching a circular shape. And then within that, I'm going to look for a shape for the white for the sort of around the nose as another oval. And then I'm going to look at sort of heart shape for the dark fur. So what I'm doing is keeping everything very light, I'm not bothering to rub anything out, I'm just taking my time to try and find the line that I like. And then there's another little V shape, or another little patch of dark, and then we get to the top of the head. So you can look to see that actually the white fur around the face is quite uh, a small amount. So take your time with that and just slowly adjust the shape. So I'm going to go up into the mouth and put this under the nose. And then sketch in a nose shape, which I'm going to just do a sort of um, cube. So I mean rectangle and then just to take the angles down. And you can see I'm just roughly getting the shapes of things. So I'm actually sketching just with the side of my lid a little bit, so I've not got any harsh lines. And I'm just moving things around now and slightly moving the shapes. And I'm looking just at how fur goes in and out a little bit. So just do the same, cast your eye over to the photograph and then back over to your drawing. Do lots and lots of observation of the photograph. The more you look, the easier it will be. But don't get too worried about everything being absolutely perfect. Just enjoy moving your lines around a little bit and looking for something similar. So the reason I don't mind using the side of my lid for this is because some parts are going to be shaded anyway and it's much easier to move and adjust and get the final lines in if my first lines are quite soft. So I'm just looking at this little interesting little sort of cheek shape which is quite cute really so we're going to just put a slight point around there and then lives up towards the top of the head. And 
the same on this side. So I'm looking at this and the white shape. So I'm not really worried about drawing a ferret, I'm almost just looking at interesting light and dark shapes. at the dark shapes just at the top of the head and then there's a slight line from the top, very tip of the head there. Looking at the dark shape in the ear. Seeing where that goes to, so to about the tip of the cheek. And then same on the other side. Just looking for where that goes to similar sort of space. And I'm just going to put the shape of the ear in. It's almost got a sort of corner to it. Just going to exaggerate that slightly. And then, although this is going to be quite soft, I can put in a bit of the body as well. So there we have our rough shape. I'm just going to take a little bit of the bottom there. If there's anything that's may be distracting, then you can erase those bits. And a little bit more light. But we're going to keep this drawing really quite loose. And the thing that we're going to think about in terms of the detail, the only thing we're going to think about are the eyes and everything else we're going to keep is quite soft and furry. So we'll take some time to get the eyes into the right place. So I've shifted my grip a little bit. I'm still using my HB pencil. And there's almost a sort of teardrop shape on its side. So just take your time with that shape. Slightly curves. So once you've popped those in, just take a moment to sort of sit back from your drawing and just see if you feel like you've got everything right. I feel like I've extended my head a little bit, so I might want to bring everything in a bit. So getting a bit of distance from your drawing, just holding it at arm's length um, and just getting slightly uh, away from it will help you just to see if you want to adjust things. So I might just move my eyes in a little. So as I said, this is the only bit we're going to think about getting into a bit of detail with and then everything else we're going to keep quite loose. I'm just looking at my proportions, just looking at the gap between the eyes, how it fits in with the nose. I'll just be happy that it's you know reasonably in the right spot. You're not going to worry too much, but just get it in proportion with your drawing. So if you want to take a bit more time, just push the pause button and take your time just to get your um, rough sketch in. And when you're ready, we're just going to look at putting 
a little bit more of a defined line in a couple more places. So I'm going to pop the nostrils in. See what I can see. So if you um, can't see loads of the detail in this part of the nose, so I'm not going to worry about trying to draw something. Just draw what you can see. Just want to get the shape roughly right, and then just be happy about the distances between things. So I just want to make the mouth a little bit closer to the nose. Play with moving your lines around a little too as you define. So don't try to draw exactly over your lines, just keep adjusting and improving things. I'm just going to look at some of the nice shapes that are in here. So a little bit more of a pointed bit of the chin. So once you've got something that you're reasonably happy with, you might just keep it very light, keep your lines very loose. I've just double checked, I've almost taken my pencil and my eye around and just had a little look at the shapes and just seen that if I'm sort of reasonably happy where things are. Um, and as I say, I think I've made my face a little bit out of proportion, but it really doesn't matter. And your um, face will look different as well, I'm sure. But what we can focus on is getting some really nice furry textures in and the only detail as I said will be in the eye. So let's take some time now to put the eyes in and I'm just going to look at there's a little um, border around the eyes where the eyeball sits into the face so I'm going to put that in so you might need to sharpen your pencil a little bit for this part and just Looking at that shape that goes around the eyes.
And then once you've done that part, you might want to grab a darker pencil if you've got one. So if you've got a 2B or a 4B, you can use this because this is going to be the blackest part of our shading. And you can mark in little white reflections. Some of them might be white and some of them might end up being grey. You can mark them in. Just draw little boxes around them. There we go. And then you can shade in because it's pretty dark around your light reflections. And you can always make them bigger and then it's easier to go a bit smaller with them afterwards. Um, once you've got the main shading in. See now I'm going to just make these a bit smaller. I can control that easily enough. And then you can take your HB if you have swapped and you can put some of the other details in because these little reflections are not really white everywhere. This one's certainly a bit more grey. It's up to you whether you like quite a lot of contrast or if you want to keep them a little more subtle. So we've got the eyes in and you can slightly adjust the shape of them and stuff and I've kept a little bit of light around the edges. It's going to look for some other spots where it's quite dark around the nose. So I'm just going to put in with my 4B pencil some bits in the nostrils and some of the patterns that are on there as well. The little spots and things I'll put on with my 4B pencil. So let's keep this quite loose and Use some of the mark making techniques you might know, just moving your pencil around, little scribble, scribbly marks. If you really want to take some time to put the dots in or the little spots, then you can do. But I think if we put a lot of detail into the eyes and we can keep everything else quite loose, that can work out. It's quite a good drawing at the end. Okay, so that is all of the detail that we really want to put in and everything else now we're going to put in 
with a nice mark making technique. So let's use our side of our lead and you can use, I've got my 4B, uh, your 2B or your 4B, or if you haven't got that, that's okay. You might just want to put a slightly um, more layers of your tone down just to get a slightly darker tone. I'm just gonna mark in where the light and dark fur roughly is. You may already have a little bit of shading in here from um, drawing out and using the side of your lead to draw your shape out as well. So if you've got any actual outlines, you'd probably want to get rid of those so that we get a nice furry texture. I'll just light, lighten them a bit. And once you've got your tones in, and don't worry too much about getting anything perfect, you can see that I've kept mine quite loose and quite scribbly, we can start to put in the fur. So I'm going to work around the eyes and then kind of work the way out. So I'm looking at some of the directions that the fur goes, mostly up the way, but at the side of the face then the lines will go sideways a little bit. And I'm just going to put those in. And I just want to just keep the little white lines that we kept outside the, or around the eyes. I'm just doing kind of little marks just to create the fur. And as you can see, these lines will then be uneven, so we won't have like a nice outline. We want to have a nice furry texture. So just do whatever is comfortable for you, really, if, in terms of making a fur texture. You can make it quite scribbly, or you can make it in individual marks. Just have fun. Now I'm going to move into this area and you can see that the, the lines will be much lighter here. There are little spots and bits that go in and out so you can put little dark areas in. But what I'm trying to do is just keep this very soft. No hard outlines around different parts. So I'm marking in sort of the darkest fur first. Or the darker areas. As you can see, I'm sort of using a mixture of kind of scribbly marks and sort of lines to look like fur. And yeah, just do what you feel comfortable doing and what you find more fun to do.
and you can slowly build up how dark you want to go. And I'm especially keeping this part of the body very much just part of the background, you know, it's out of focus in the photograph as well. And we don't want to have too much attention drawn to this part, but we do want it to be darker to let the um, face stand out more. So you just work at your own pace, building in little dark bits of the fur, just keep having a look at the photograph and deciding where you want to put them. And once you've got something in then you can start to put in the lighter fur so I'm going to switch back to my HB for this and I'm going to just use quite light lines to put some of the fur onto what would be the sort of white areas and then what I'm going to do after that I'm just going to put some shadows under the mouth and so on is to put in the little dark spots where the whiskers kind of would come out of. And I'm keeping these, it's all very scribbly and very loose. So just enjoy making the marks. And even with my HB, I can still build up darker tones if I want to. And there's some darker areas of the fur and the white fur at the sides as well as underneath the mouth. So as the sort of dark fur moves into the lighter fur, there's still some tone there. The spots, so just pop that in. So it's not really white and we still have a bit of texture. And anywhere that you spot a little bit of a straight line of drawing then just soften that a little bit I'm just going to put the shape in of the ears now. So with my HB pencil I'm just going to draw the ear shape in but again just have this sort of little fluffy edge to it. And if you wanted this to be more realistic, then you could take more time and have it a little less scribbly. But I quite like the idea of doing quite a little loose, sketchy drawing and keeping all the detail just for the eyes. I'm going to build up a bit more of a darker tone in some spots on the nose just to distinguish that from the fur. And you can just keep building up the tones 
till you get to the sort of depth of tone that you want you're happy with how dark it all is just building in a bit more of a darker fur around the eyes just so the little white area pops out a bit more I've just switched back to my darker pencil just to put even some areas just a little bit of darker tone but I want to keep the eyes as one of the darkest areas so I'm not going to go too dark with it going to put in some more little furry lines into spots as well. of the where the light's hitting. So now you hopefully are at a stage where you can just have fun now just popping in all the lines wherever you see little bits that you want to add. and look a little bit grumpy. We'll see.
whenever you are happy with the depth of tone and the furriness of your character, then the last thing to do is just to add in some whiskers and just even soften your edges a little more. So I think I'll leave my fur there, even though I think it would be, I could probably do this for a lot longer and just keep adding in little lines and just bringing the two dark and light furs together even more. But I'll pretty much leave my fur there and I'm just going to add in the whiskers and there's some eye whiskers here so I'm going to use my 4B pencil. I'm just going to keep it as thin as I can and just draw them in quite dark. And then some whiskers coming out of his nose. I'm just drawing them slowly so that I don't make the line too thick. But you could draw them quite fast as well if you want to make a more of a mark. I just want to, I know my pencil is very soft, but I want to use my 4B because it's nice and dark. There's quite a lot of dark lines here, so I can be a bit faster here. Yeah, I think that's possibly enough. Obviously, there's some little light ones which we will have to leave for this drawing. And when you think you're happy with what you've done, just take a little sit back from it and have one last look at it. And see if there's anything that you'd like to add as a last finishing touch. And then when you're done, sign, date it if you like and you've got your own little ferret sketch. So I really hope that you enjoy drawing that and I'd love to see all of your ferret characters. So you can share them on the It's Good To Give Facebook page and you can also send them to me at The City Workshop. You can find all the details to contact me below. And check out all the other amazing things that are happening this weekend over on the It's Good To Give Facebook event page and get involved and if you can, make a donation. And I really hope you'll join me again for another drawing in the future. So until then, take care.